Welcome to our video for high leverage practice number 14, Teach Cognitive and Metacognitive Strategies to Support Learning and Independence. There are 22 high leverage practices for students with disabilities spread across four domains. Teach Cognitive and Metacognitive Strategies is in the Instruction domain. The major source for content in this video is the chapter by Shannon Budden and her colleagues from SUNY Buffalo State College in the book HLPs for Inclusive Classrooms, published by Routledge and CEC. This video is split into two parts. In part one, we provide a definition and rationale for teaching cognitive and metacognitive strategies to support learning and independence. In part two, we highlight two key principles for effectively using this HLP and demonstrate teachers using them in action. Let's start with an introduction. Using cognitive or metacognitive strategies includes two main components. First, students learn strategies to address a specific academic task or social behavioral concern, and then they evaluate the effects of the strategy on their performance. Cognitive strategies address the application of an approach, whereas metacognitive strategies focus on student self-evaluation and the effectiveness of the strategy. To use and evaluate a strategy, students must be explicitly taught the purpose, functional steps, mental actions, and evaluation process for the strategy. Both types of strategies are used to support student memory, attention, and self-regulation of learning and behavior, and simultaneously help them keep one eye towards how well everything is working. In so doing, the strategies help students become self-directed, independent learners. In other words, when students learn and use a strategy, they are essentially learning how to learn and then how to use the strategy to execute a skill or process. It's important to note that a strategy in this context is not merely a set of step-by-step -step instructions, but instead is an instructional technique that can facilitate learning and generalization across a number of situations, contexts, and types of academic content. Strategies can also scaffold success for students across academic and behavioral domains at the same time. Strategies help students become better problem solvers. That is, through learning and using strategies, students become more adept at identifying problem areas, developing and using solutions to address the difficulties, monitoring their learning and progress, and reflecting on how well the solution worked. The teacher plays a critical role in student use of strategies. The high leverage practice of teaching students what, how, and when to engage in cognitive and metacognitive strategy use is the key. Thus, strategies must be explicitly taught in order to be effective. While some students may be able to develop or figure out strategies on their own, students with disabilities and others who struggle often need instruction in specific strategies, including when and how to use them, coupled with practice and feedback. Using the principles of explicit instruction, including clear language, modeling, guided practice, providing feedback, and independent practice, teachers should help students understand what cognitive and metacognitive strategies are, as well as how and when to use them effectively. Please see video number 16 in this series for more information on explicit instruction. In addition to being explicitly taught, cognitive and metacognitive strategies should be embedded in academic and non-academic lessons so students can experience the various ways in which these strategies are used 
to learn specific academic content. Integrating cognitive and metacognitive strategies into content helps students monitor and evaluate their performance during authentic tasks and can help them generalize strategies to other content and settings. One example of a cognitive strategy in mathematics is the solve it method of problem solving. This requires the student to read a problem for understanding, paraphrase the problem into their own words, visualize a picture or diagram of the problem, make a plan to solve the problem, estimate the answer, do the arithmetic to solve, and then check it to make sure everything is right. While using the solve it strategy for problem solving, students self-monitor by asking themselves guided questions after performing each step in the strategy procedure. For example, after reading the problem, students are taught to ask themselves, have I read and understood the problem? By asking and answering guided questions after each step in the solve it procedure, students learn to monitor and assess their work. When students use a metacognitive strategy, they self-monitor their learning or behavior and evaluate effectiveness. An example of a metacognitive strategy is self-regulation in which students learn to organize their thoughts and make decisions about using various skills in order to learn and then monitor progress towards a learning goal. In sum for part one, cognitive and metacognitive strategies are designed to help students become self-directed and independent learners. Teachers have an important role in facilitating this process by including strategies in their instruction and directly teaching students when and how to use them. These strategies, when taught explicitly with modeling and guided practice, have been proven effective across content areas for students with disabilities. Part 2. Two Key Principles of Teaching Cognitive and Metacognitive Strategies There are two key components of this HLP for teachers to consider. Component 1 is to select strategies purposefully. Component 2 is multifaceted but revolves around the components of explicit instruction. First, teachers should explicitly teach the components of the strategy. Teachers also need to model use of the strategy and provide guided and independent practice opportunities for students. Component 1. Select strategies purposefully. Teachers should select cognitive and metacognitive strategies that will not only stick with students, but that also have high utility, align well with content being taught, and are appropriate for the functioning level of the student. Strategies that are too complex or ask the student to complete skills that are too difficult will not have the intended impact. For example, teaching students to use context clues in the text to determine the meaning of an unfamiliar word could support reading comprehension across subjects. Teachers should use progress monitoring and feedback to determine the extent to which the strategies are appropriate for the needs of the students. This connects with other HLPs from the collaboration and assessment domains. The second component of HLP 14 is to use explicit instruction to support student learning of the strategy and readiness to use it independently. As explicit instruction has several key components, we highlight three critical components here related to explicitly teaching students how to use strategies. First, teachers should introduce the strategy and explain the specific strategy components. One helpful way to show students the components of a strategy is by using a visual aid, such as a graphic organizer or anchor chart. However, regardless of visual aids, explicit instruction should be used. The teacher needs to provide clear explanations and provide examples and non-examples as appropriate. Teachers should also monitor students' understanding of the strategy's steps and components through questioning and opportunities to respond during guided practice and provide specific, immediate feedback on student use of new strategies or skills. Other elements of explicit instruction are included in the next two components of this HLP. In this first clip, Mr. Sean McDonald is working with a student in a distance environment because of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
he explicitly introduces a strategy and its steps. Note the use of numerous opportunities to respond and high quality feedback that is provided. All right, good afternoon, Megan, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing well, I'm doing well. So last lesson, we had just wrapped up uh, creating our own definition of opportunity costs. Okay, so if you remember, uh, we came up with the following definition, all right? So I'm gonna put it on the screen and we're gonna just read, first of all, we're gonna just read through it together. Okay. So opportunity cost is? Opportunity cost is the second best choice given up when you make a decision. Great, thumbs up if you're good with that definition so far. Awesome. So today we're gonna to identify the opportunity costs of everyday decisions using a specific problem solving strategy called, are you asking? What's it called? Are you asking? Nice. So here's a simple example of what the strategy is like. Okay, have you ever watched a YouTube or Netflix video in super HD and then gone back and watched it in like slow definition? Yeah. Okay, how do you know, how do you think the experience would be different when you switch between the definitions? Um, well, the better one would probably be better quality of the video and you'd be able to see things better. Exactly, love it. I love you said see things better. Good, good inferences there. So are you asking is an important strategy because it will help you see word problems in HD. Okay, what I mean by that is it will help you clearly see the question and answer after you've broken down the problem. Okay, so let's do it. Here's a visual to the strategy steps of the are you asking strategy, okay? If you have your graphic organizer, you can also look at it at this time. All right, so Megan, as you see, each letter represents a step in the are you asking strategy, okay? So during this lesson, each step will have a picture that clearly describes the strategy and you have your organizer as well with you to help you through that, mm -hmm. okay? So what's the first step to the are you asking strategy? read the word problem aloud exactly exactly and and what the picture shows how does the picture relate to that step well when you're talking the volume would show that you're actually like saying something excellent excellent observation there okay so let's go to the second step all right so the second step is you which stands for underline underline correct I love that you're also using your visual aid as a reference. Okay, what are you underlining exactly? Um, the choice made. You're underlining the choice made, exactly. The choice that the character makes. This is where you will be able to easily spot the most important event in the story. When a what is made? Um, the choice is made. When the choice is made, excellent. And what will you do once you've found where the choice is made? What are you gonna do with your pencil? Um, you can underline it. You can underline it, exactly. Let's keep going to the third step. All right, so the third step and final step starts with an A, which stands for? Asking yourself. The, the asking step, exactly, where you ask yourself, and what are you exactly are you asking yourself? What second best choice was given up? The second best choice given up, good. The best part of this step, Megan, is because of steps one and two, you will be able to see the answer really clearly, okay? So now that we've explained the are you asking strategy, let's go ahead and model how to use it, and then we'll practice it on our own. Another key part of explicitly teaching the components of a strategy is for the teacher to model its use. In order for students to see the purpose and application of a strategy, the teacher should provide models. These models can be likened to the I do portion of explicit instruction. For example, one effective way a teacher can model the use of a cognitive or metacognitive strategy for students is by using the think aloud approach to provide a verbal description of what completing each step looks like and demonstrate when to move on to the next step as they work through an example problem. When using think alouds, students observe the teacher using a strategy while narrating the steps to show how skilled problem solvers approach tasks. This supports students' metacognitive ability by helping them understand how to think about their thinking. In this clip, Mr. McDonald provides a clear model of how to use the strategy, but note how he continues to monitor the student's comprehension so he isn't doing all of the talking. Awesome, okay, so Megan, let's go to the second step. So obviously you see you with the image, okay? Using the visual tool on our screen, what does you stand for again? Underline. 
Underline the what? The choice made. Underline the choice that Deontay is making. Good. So I will now locate the choice made, and I can do this best by quickly scanning the paragraph for action word for action verbs. Okay, action verbs like decide, choose, making a decision. So any anytime the character is 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 using those actions, that's where I can best find where he's going to make the choice. Okay, so I'm going to just so I need to find those action verbs. Another hint is: Will Deontay's choice likely be at the beginning of the story or more at the end of the story? Do you think? At the end. At the end, exactly. So I'm going to start from the bottom, and then move my way up. Okay, so I'm going to start scanning. I'm going to start scanning, and look, I found the action verb chooses. So he chooses to stay after school to get extra help for science. Can we go ahead and underline that sentence as the choice being made? Yeah. Absolutely. Excellent. So I'm going to go ahead and underline that. All right, now let's go to the third and final step. Lastly, it's important to provide guided and independent opportunities for students to practice using the strategy. We can liken this stage of the process to the we do and you do parts of the explicit instruction strategy lesson. Teachers should provide students with guided and independent practice opportunities for each component of the strategy, or in other words, scaffold the learning of the approach. In addition, students need opportunities to apply the overall strategy that includes all components. As students practice, teachers should provide specific, immediate feedback to let students know how they are progressing towards mastery of the strategy. Giving specific and immediate feedback also allows the teacher to correct mistakes and misconceptions quickly. To learn more about the role of feedback in improving student outcomes, please watch HLPs number 8 and 22 provide positive and constructive feedback to guide students' learning and behavior. For the sake of time, we do not include the sample guided and independent practice clip here. Please visit this website to see Mr. McDonald use this element of the practice. You can also see a good example of guided and independent practice in this unedited clip available as part of the HLP video series at this address. In conclusion, cognitive and metacognitive strategies are designed to help students become more self-directed and independent learners. While some students may be able to develop their own learning strategies, students with disabilities often need explicit instruction to learn specific strategies that support their learning, including when and how to apply them. Teachers should purposefully and carefully select the cognitive and metacognitive strategies they teach so that students can be more successful in their learning. Then, teachers should use explicit instruction, including modeling, guided practice, and specific feedback to teach students strategies and monitor student progress towards acquiring skills. More information about cognitive and metacognitive strategies and their role in supporting the needs of students with and without disabilities can be found at www.highleveragepractices.org. Thanks for watching, and please continue using resources from this series on high leverage practices for special education.